Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Not A Pro Gardener here and we are in zone 6B. Today we're going to be talking about some micronutrients, plant nutrients, and how important they are. We're going to give some tips on when to apply for tomatoes and broccoli because it's going to apply to my situation right here in the garden and we'll talk about it in a minute. It is the first weekend in June Midday, we are going to be doing this, and it's 87 degrees out here, partly cloudy. It's kind of been a little stormy weather here lately, and we were supposed to get rain lots of different times, but but we haven't quite had a rain yet. Sprinkling here or there, but that's nowhere near enough. The ground's cracking because we need some moisture in the soil. And this is one of those times when I'm thanking myself. Thanks for putting that drip line in. Thanks for putting the drip irrigation in. Don't have to overwater anything. It's one of those things that if you can afford to do it, it is a huge tool to have in your arsenal for gardening if you count on the food and you really are interested in this hobby. Now, the reason we are doing this right now is because our tomatoes need a dose at the right time with the nutrients and a certain micronutrient to help prevent blossom end rot and other diseases. Same goes for broccoli. Now I'll pip up a video here of our broccoli so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about while I'm discussing it. Now when the broccoli starts getting, the broccoli heads start getting around a quarter to a half dollar size of production on your broccoli heads, the florets to be precise, when they start getting that big, that's when it's best to apply your last fertilization. We use a calcium based fertilizer that is water soluble. So we can fertilize it that last time with this high nitrogen fertilizer and we get that calcium into the root system which also helps with disease issues. Now the good thing about having a flexible fertilizer like this is you can side dress it and wait for the rain. There's going to be no rain coming for a while so we're going to be injecting this into the drip line which is another added benefit of having that injector and drip system. Since you do have an injector, you do want to make sure the fertilizer you put in it is water soluble and it's flowable. Some stuff cannot be injected so you have to kind of look and make sure stuff is like made to do that. Now this last fertilization, since I can go through my drip system, I have a drip line for each one of my row of crops in this garden plot and you'll see with a little clip of b-roll here the garden we're going to be able to fertilize all this with this calcium nitrate i'm going to pop up an image of that as well so you can see what it is we are using to fertilize this with because with the whole tomatoes and brassicas they're all in the same plot now i have those turn offs i can turn off whatever i don't want to fertilize but i want to fertilize everything so i'm going to use probably half a 10 pound bag dissolve it make sure it's all dissolved and then i will inject it and that's going to cover the brassicas now on to the tomatoes with tomatoes you want to fertilize them with this calcium based fertilizer or you want to throw a handful of pelletized gypsum and cultivate it in at the base of the plant when they start setting some blooms whenever they start producing them little flowers and whenever you want to keep them like if they're too small your plants are too small you pull them little blooms off so your plants can get bigger but if you're ready to start producing tomatoes and they start putting blooms on you want to throw some pelletized gypsum down there to help prevent diseases like blossom end rot. That will help 
tremendously to reduce that problem if you have that problem. Now, fertilizing these brassicas, this will be the last time I have to fertilize these guys. They are in the last stages of their life except for the kale and collards. I'm gonna keep those as long as I can. Multiple harvest veggies right there. Now, the Brussels sprouts, the cauliflower, and the broccoli. Oh, and the cabbage, let's not forget the cabbage. All of those, this will be the last time I fertilize them and the calcium is just gonna be added for disease resistance and strengthen the cell walls of the plant. So we're gonna talk a little more in depth on plant nutrition. Basically, I'm going to name off a list of the nutrients that your plant need, micronutrients. I like to call the main ones macronutrients, but they all are micronutrients for you to supply your plant with to have a good life. Now let's talk more in depth on micronutrients or trace elements you may have heard in plant nutrition. Now what do plants need in order for them to grow would be your micronutrients. I like to say macronutrients for the main important ones, but they are all important to have, but in just different amounts. Now let's break it down just a little bit more. Now in case somebody might not have been aware, for any beginner gardeners, there are 16 essential plant nutrients. The main three are N, P, and K, as you've heard, or they are known as N, P, and K, which would be nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The other important micronutrients are calcium, magnesium, sulfur. The others are only in need of tiny amounts, so you don't have to worry about them as much, but if you want to know where your soil is at, get a soil test done and try to gather parts of multiple spots in your plot. Don't just get it all from one area if you're gonna send in a test. But for beginner gardeners, you might not understand a lot about those kind of things. Now the tiny amounts of these micronutrients that are important, but you don't need a lot of, are nickel, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, which are known as your trace elements. And the last three are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, are also part of the 16 plant nutrients. But we're not going to talk about all of them today. We're just going to talk about one briefly because it applies to my situation and I was doing research on it. So we're going to talk about calcium. Now the plants need calcium and there are a few reasons. Now the plants need calcium. Now here's a few reasons that calcium is good for your plants. It'll kind of give you an idea of what calcium can do for your plants. It strengthens the cell walls on your plants. It also helps maintain the pH levels. It activates enzymes in your plant and it improves water penetration and it increases the resistance to disease, which is one of the main reasons why we do it here besides the water penetration in our soil. Now applying calcium, I would say you'd probably wanna get a soil test done before you apply any giant quantities of amounts or anything like that. You wanna know where you stand. Calcium also, we have used it a couple times because we have heavy soil compaction. Our heavy clay soil is was slightly acidic, but we were trying to amend for that a little bit here, there, and I think this next year we're going to be doing much better off. Now, the calcium makes sure the plant grows and develops correctly, and it keeps them from dying too quickly. How to tell if the plant has a calcium deficiency? In most cases, it grows a deformity or like stunted or it's like an abnormality in the plant. Like if you look down at the plant, you can kind of tell it different from the pattern of the leaves or the other leaves, you know. And it can also cause some yellowing or chlorosis of the leaves, but be thorough before you add anything to your soil because there are lots of different deficiencies that can cause yellowing of the leaves. So you want to be absolutely sure and do your research. Get out of here, fly before you apply anything. So keep that in mind. And a second way to tell if your plants are going to have or have deficiencies would be a soil test. So if there's a lot of stuff going wrong to all your crops and it's like widespread, I would suggest getting a soil test done to see what could be the issue. All in all, you wanna make sure you do your research thoroughly before adding any amounts of anything. There's lots of ways to add plant nutrients and here's how we apply them. Now there are lots of other things that your plants need, you know, like consistent watering schedules and bacteria life in your soil. You know, there's just a lot of things that factor into plant life and the plant nutrition is a big part of it. If you can get that right, I think you'll have a pretty good gardening season. 
which is one of the reasons why we use that micro boost, which you've seen me use that many times before. It's something they don't need a lot of. So one jug usually gets me through the whole season for both garden plots and my raised beds. There are lots of products out there. That's just the one that we use. So you just do your own research, stay diligent on your weeds and your fertilization and watering schedule. And I think you have a great gardening season for any new gardeners out there. Now, the reason because I'm telling you all this is because while I was doing my research for this calcium additive to the garden, which is what I wanted to inform somebody else about if they haven't been using it before, if they haven't been using it before, or they are having these problems, but they don't quite know what it is. Plant nutrition is a whole team and they all work together. And we'll probably touch base more on this in another video. Lacking in one or two of these nutrients could be causing what your problems are. You just got to do your diligence and just do your homework. So this is not a pro gardener here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time out there in a the garden. Have a great day.